In this tape, we're going to talk about database management, and we probably should start things out by briefly explaining what we mean by a database. There are many examples of everyday usage in which we run into databases, most cases not computerized databases. I have a couple examples here to illustrate what I'm talking about. Here is my little, one of my little check stub information books that many of you would have with your checkbooks as well. This is a database. It contains a collection of information relative to my activity in my uh, particular checking account over some interval of time. The file, if we could call it that, is the book itself, and there are records. Each line in the uh, check stub book has a record's worth of information, and the records are broken up into fields. There's a check number field, there is a date field, there's a who it was made out to field, and there's an amount field, and so forth. Now let's write those words on the board here so that we have them embedded in our mind and we can use them uh, fairly comfortably in the context of database management. We have the word file, which we've used before. A database is a file. We have the word record, which we're using here for the first time. The file contains records. And then we have the word field, which further subdivides the records into smaller sections. So we'll use file, record, and field fairly uh, glibly here, and we hope you understand that and can follow it very nicely. Another everyday example, just to illustrate one, of a database is the telephone book. It's also not computerized, although it certainly could be. The file, the database itself, is constituted by the book. The records are the one-line entries on each, in each column of the telephone book, and the fields, as you're all aware, consist of a last name, a first name, an address, and a telephone number. Now, in our particular example, the first ex in our system here, the first example we're going to give you is a simple example illustrating the same type of database, that is to say a telephone database, that we're going to build right here on the screen and show how it might be done. The particular database manager we're going to use is called DBase2. That's the name of the product. It's a representative product, a very popular one. There are many other database managers like it. We've chosen it because of its widespread use and because it's quite powerful. Let's go over here to the screen, see where we stand. We're sitting here with CPM running. The CPM prompt, as we've seen before, is right here. Over here in our disks, we have in the A disk, our system pr uh, program containing our database manager, and in the B disk or the B disk drive, we have the data files we've already built and also wish to build the ones we're going to use here on the B disk. Let's, without further ado, just run this database manager and start to show you how it works. We do that by typing the program name, oops, dbase, and hitting carriage return. And as is customary, and as we've seen before, we get a message. It says, enter the date if you want to. We're not going to enter a date for this example, so we just hit carriage return. And we get a further message telling us that DBase2 is now running. And we get a period right down here, which you can barely see on your screen. The period is a DBase2 prompt that says, type a command. Many DBase2 commands. Must be 50, 60 commands that we could type that would mean something to the DBase2 file manager. We're not going to show all of them by any means. We're going to show you some of them. The first one we will type will be to set default to B. That means the default disk, the one to which database files will be sent, and the one we'll be addressing will be the B disk rather than the A disk. We've already said that's what we want to do. Now we will do, to begin generating our own database, a create command. Create means let's build a data, database from scratch. That's the command. We hit carriage return. It says what file name do you want to give to this database. We'll give it file name phone one. 
All right, now we already have a phone one on here, and we'll notice that when I hit return, it will say, do you want to destroy the existing file? And I will say yes, because I want to build a new one. At that point, I get this little set of instructions that says, enter record structure. The structure means, what are you going to call the fields? How big are they? And so forth. So we start out, field number one is designated here. We'll start out calling our first field last name. And it will be a character field consisting of alphabetic characters, OK? And it will be 10 characters wide, all right? The second one will be first name. It will also be a character field. You'll notice some, oops, I've got, I, I want to make sure to spell that right. First, e, and I'm going to leave the E off there. We get into some peculiarities in file names because we're limited to eight characters. You'll notice that a number of times, so we'll leave the E off the end of first name, and it'll be a character file, and it'll also be 10 characters long. Hope not V, but C. Okay, the third one will be address. And it'll be a character file. We'll leave a little more room for it. We'll leave 15 characters. The fourth one will be the phone number, which we will make a character file as well. This may seem peculiar to you. Read the study guide if you'd like to know why we're making this a character rather than a number, number a type. And it'll be eight characters long. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to have four fields in this database, in this particular record structure. And so we'll hit return to signify we don't want to do anymore. It says, do we want to input data now? We'll input a little bit of data just to show you how it works. We'll say Y for yes. We, at the top of the screen, are able now to enter the data according to the field designations we've already given. This is record number one. We'll just enter my name. We'll say it's my, my uh, phone number. So my last name is Smay. My first name is Terry. My address is 213 Coover. And my phone number is 294-2616. And now we could enter record number two. In the interest of speeding up the demonstration here, I've already entered a number of these uh, into another database file in here. And so I won't enter any more right here on the screen. I will simply bring in these other few records that I've already generated to build this database up a little bigger so we can use it. So I will terminate, hitting return here. I will now say I want to use this database, which is phone one. I, that's another dbase2 command. Down here at the bottom, I will type the command use. And the name of the, of the uh, database is phone one. OK, and now I'm using it. And I will say append, which means to add to it from another database. And the other one, it happens to be called phone. That's the one I've pre-prepared so that we could have something to look at here. And it's doing that. And it says 10 records have been added. All right, let's look at the database we, that now results from this. We've now got the record I entered plus the 10 that have been added. Let's do a browse command. All right, down here we see the word browse. That's a valid dbase2 command. We hit return, and uh, we only see the last record here, and I can step my way up through it in order to uh, see the whole thing. And there it is. We have 11 records here. Focus in on those. You see the first one is my name. That makes sense. That was the one that I entered. The other 10 have been appended from the other file. And you can look at the details in your study guide if you want to. Notice these are not in order. We didn't make a point of it when we talked about the phone book, but we know that ordering is important, or alphabetizing in the case of the phone book is very important. You have to have the powerful capability for putting things in alphabetic, or in some cases, numeric order throughout your databases. The phone book does that. If we didn't have ordering, we would have a heck of a time trying to figure out how to look up numbers. In this case, we don't have it ordered. Let's use a dbase command to order this file. And the word we will use, and the name of the command, is sort. The word sort means to order, put things in order, either alphabetic or numeric. OK, so we'll do a Control w to uh, go back to command level here. And we will say, now we're still using phone one, so we'll say, let's sort it. And we have to say, on what field? We'll sort it on the last name field. And we're going to sort it to another file. In other words, we're going to generate another database file as a result of our sorting operation to phone two. All right? We will wait for it. Now, this takes a few seconds. 
It's a very small database, only takes 10 or 15 seconds to sort it. It would take many minutes up to hours in a case where you had, let's say, a few thousand records. So sorting is a slow process, and we need to remember that. Okay, now let's use phone two just to see what's happened here. We're now using phone two, and let's do a browse on phone two. And here's our same database, but it has been sorted. Notice the first name is now Carson, which is the first letter, alpha, first name alphabetically. Finster, Frog, Jones, and so forth. Uh, my name has been moved down into appropriate alphabetic order here. All right? So sorting is something we need to be able to do. We have an alternative to sorting, which we'll see in another example here, which is called indexing. And we'll uh, remember that indexing is like sorting in that it gives you the effective ordering. It's a somewhat more, uh, uh, or should say, a somewhat less time-consuming process for big databases. All right, let's uh, go back to command level here and consider a very simple example of interrogation of this database. What we've done here now is to create the database and manipulate it a little bit and to sort it. The other form of activity is to look for information in the database. We'll look at one very simple example. Let's see, you, you've probably had this situation. I certainly have. You have a phone number that's written down or sent to you or whatever, and you say to yourself, I wonder whose phone number that is. Or, or I wonder what the address is of the person who has that phone number, okay? We can ask, using an appropriate command here, to find that information. Let's just use my phone number because I happen to remember it. And let's say this. This is a dbase2 command. Let's say display, let's say last name. Oh, let's do it, let's do it in the right order. First name, last name, and let's say address. The whole works. For number equal, and we have to put a quote around this, 294-2616. All right, it's kind of a long command. It says display the first name, last name, and address for the phone number equal to 294-2616. All right, let's just hit return and see what we get. And we get record number seven, which is Terry Smay, 213 Coover. All right, I think that's an obviously useful sort of thing to do. Such commands, search commands, are com and, and uh, uh, interrogation commands are among the most common things we want to do, and we'll see that showing up over and over here. Okay, now we're done with this very simple example. I'd like to go on now and look at a bigger database and show you, uh, one, how somewhat more powerful things can be done, and two, also show you how things tend to slow down as you go to larger databases. I have one in here, and this is the one I'm going to go to, which is a collection of information, each record of which consists of information relative to a review of a software product. I've gone to a magazine, just one magazine, a number of issues of it, and I've taken all the reviews of software products, listed appropriate information in the record structure of the database I'm going to show you here. And now I have that, and I'll show it to you. It's called Soft Review, S-O-F-T-R-E-V, Soft Rev. So we'll say use soft, OK? And now let's see if we can figure out a little bit about what this database is like. We'll say list structure. That'll tell us what the fields are. And we'll get quite a display here. This is a somewhat more complicated database, as I told you it would be. It's called SoftRev. It has 15 fields, the product name, the category, the price of the product, the publication in which it was reviewed, the date it was reviewed, four items of evaluation, performance documentation, ease of use and error handling, and then, the and then some miscellaneous information, uh, and then manufacturer's name, manufacturer's address in three lines, and his phone number, all right? Notice 205 bytes per record is what's reserved here. And if we swing back up to the top, we notice this up to this point, we have 126 records, all right? It's a medium size, not a real large database, but it's medium sized. It, the total file is about 26,000 bytes, okay? Now, let's uh, look at a typical record. Just to show you what one looks like here, we'll do an edit of, let's say, record number one. All right, edit one, and here it is. Record number one is all laid out for us. You can read this in your study guide or look at it here very briefly. The name of it is it's a software product, PC Intercom. It's a communication product, costs $99, reviewed in InfoWorld, uh, date, 
uh, excellent or good, good, excellent, excellent, and manufacturer's information. Each of the records in this file looks like this. All right? Now, let's go back to command level. We always do that with control W. That's something you have to remember in DBase 2. And let's uh, consider the problem of ordering. Let's do a browse. Oops. W-S-E. Browse command. Uh, I must have... No. B-R-O-W-S-E. I did a space and I shouldn't have done it. There we go. There's a browse command. Shows us the first few records in the soft rev database. You will notice if you glance at these on the screen or in your, on your study guide, they are not ordered. This, uh, this uh, database is not alphabetized, all right? That's because it's, uh, it's, uh, it shows up, the, the order of things is in the form that I entered them, all right? Now, I, I could sort this database as I did before, and it would probably take me about three or four minutes to sort it. If it was a 1,000 records, it would probably take me 45 minutes. I have used a technique called indexing in which I do the following to accomplish the ordering without having to sort. I go through a process of generating a so-called index file. Okay, you can read more detail about this in the study guide. I'm not going to go into it here. The index file, let me go back here. The index file that will, in, that will cause uh, ordering to be done on the product name here is called prod index. And so what I will do is this. This, this, I, this is a very quick run through, and, and you'll have to read the book in order to get a clearer understanding, but I just want to show you the effect. If I set index to prodndx, now that's the name of a file, product index. I build it, and it will quickly brought into play just by hitting return. Now I am using prod index, and if I do a browse, you will notice, as I look at the, my, go back and look at the very same database, it's not a different one, it's the same one, I now I'm looking at it in alphabetic order. It starts out with the first item here is, it looks like it starts with a P, but it actually starts with a dollar sign. Okay, and dollar sign is lower in alphabetical order than an A. The next one starts with A and, and several A's, several B's, several C's, and so forth. The important point is I didn't have to sort. I didn't have to create a new database file. I simply brought into play, brought into activity, an index file which caused the appropriate ordering to take place. I have several other index files here which could cause ordering to take place on other criteria and other fields as well. I could order on category, I could order on price, have the lowest price to the highest price, and so forth. Indexing is a very powerful technique. It's something that, uh, you, that you'll really want to understand if you use database management systems. All right? Now, let's um, do some interrogation, such as we did before. A little bit more complicated and, and uh, uh, more useful sort of thing than we did in our previous example. We'll continue to use this sorted uh, or indexed, as we said, on prod index. Let's do this. Let's do a list. Let's suppose we'd like to know about all the word processing programs in here, all right? We can say this. List uh, product price for category equal WP. All right, that's, let's just examine that command. It says list, go through this database, this command says, and list on the screen the product and the price for any item which has a category equal to WP, which means word processing. This says find all the word processors and show them. I'll hit return and we'll see what happens here, all right? Now it's gonna take some time. That's one of the things I wanted to illustrate, that there is time involved as, you, as your database uh, uh, files get large, the time that it takes to do these sort of things gets longer. And notice we've got about five items that have been found so far. There'll be a few more. You'll notice some of them have zero prices on them. The zero price just means I didn't know what the price is. There's none of these that cost zero, as a matter of fact. That's just an artificiality that happens to be present here. All right? Okay, there, I don't know how many there are. I could count them. Looks like about a dozen or so. And we found all the word processing programs. Let's do that same one again and, and do it in a slightly different way to show you just a little bit of the flavor you might use in, in looking for another type of search. Let's say list product price for category equals word processor. Notice I have to be pretty careful of the so-called syntax or rules here and have quote signs and so forth. And let's say furthermore, and also 
price less than $100. All right? Uh, uh, that this will ask a list from this same list all those items which are word processor, but only the ones that cost less than $100. Let's try that and see what happens. We'll see a similar sort of search take place here. We should, by the way, you, you can see, we should get some of those that are on the previous list, but only those that cost less than $100, obviously. There's two there. One of them costs zero, which I told you before isn't really true. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items on that list. Now, I think it's not too hard for you to see that using these kind of commands, being able to specify fields, uh, size of field, ranges of fields, and so forth, you can really extract a lot of information that could be very useful to you in fairly short per periods of time. However, a disadvantage that I think you can see here is that you have to remember the commands. You don't have a menu, as you did in the case of our word processing system we looked at. And you have to be very careful of the syntax. The quote signs and the periods and whether you put spaces in when you're not supposed to and so forth, that can be a real pain in the neck. You'd like not to do that. You'd like to have a more user-friendly way of using this system. One mechanism that's provided here, which is very powerful, that allows you that user-friendliness, gives you a user-friendliness that, uh, that achieves the ends that you'd like, is the provision for using so-called command files. Now let's just say a couple of words about this and then we'll show you an example. It's not real complicated, but pay real close attention because it's not hard to get lost either. We've seen dbase two commands. We've seen the list command and the create command and the browse command and others. Set the set index command and there are many others, up to, up to 50 or more. Okay, you can, if you wish, put a collection of these commands in a file. You can write a so-called command file. You can then use another dbase2 command, which is the do command, to cause the instructions or the commands that are to be executed to be taken out of that file rather than taken from the keyboard as you type them. And so you can put all your effort into working up the commands and the list of commands you want to do in generating the command file. Once having gotten that to work, you can use it over and over and over again. Among the things you can do with your command file, for example, are to generate menus. I'm going to show you one command file. It's, it's a little busy. I've got four of them that we're going to use here. Let me show you one command file, and I hope you get an idea of what, it's, uh, what the general nature of things is. I'll go back to uh, CPM to do this, and I'll, so therefore I'll do a quit to get out of, that's, a, that's another command, to get out of dbase2, and I'll do a type, which is a CPM command, a type B on the B drive, A-D-D-R-E-C dot C-M-D. That's a command file, it's, it's C-M-D means it's a command file. It is a add record command file. When you execute this, when you ask dbase2 to execute this command file, what should happen is you should have the ability to add records. When we look at this, and I'll do that by hitting return, we see a number of items at the top of this. The first, let's just go right to the top. Let's focus in kind of tight on it. This is the first command, which is erase. That means erase the screen. When this command file, when these commands are executed and the command file is in place, the erase command will be executed. That means take everything off the screen. The next one will be a command that says at row five, column 10, say, which means display this message. You see what we're doing here? This command file is going to start giving us a menu. Then we'll have a question mark. That's another form of display command that says just put a blank line there if you don't mind. And then another blank line to space things out. Here's a question mark that says please put the message, add records and so forth that you can read here on your study guide. So that's a message generating command for the screen, part of your menu. Another blank line, another message and so forth. So this particular set of commands up here will essentially generate commands. I'm sure, I'm sorry, a menu on the screen to make it easier for the operator to use this. All right. Now, we will set the index to four index files. We do that because we're going to update our database here in adding a record or records, and we want to update the, the index files too. Then there's a wait command right here. The wait command says, wait until the person has read this, at which point he will hit a keystroke and we'll proceed 
we will then do an append. We've seen the append command earlier. That'll put us into a mode in which we're able to add a record or more than one if we want to, and then a return which says go back to command level, all right? Now that's one command file. We have four, four of them that we're going to really use here. They're all four listed in your study guide. I think you, you should get the idea from looking at this one what the nature of a command file is and what the purpose of it is. The purpose of it is to provide the capability to use this system without having to remember the detailed command syntax, to have the commands built into a file that you as a user or somebody else who you've built this system for can use conveniently in a much more user-friendly manner. Now let's run dbase to get back to where we were. Okay, and let's do a dbase2 command. I told you what it was a little bit ago. It's, it's do, all right? Do. And it, the do will cause a command file to be executed. The command file is called review, R-E-V-I-E-W. And it's on the B disk, so we say B review. Okay, now when I do this, what I'm going to get is a menu a menu that's built into, that I have written into the review command file. And let's see what it is. Here it is. Tells what the system does, gives me some instructions up here at the top, and it says hit either one or two or three or four, depending upon what you'd like to do. Let's quickly go through these. Each of these four items has associated with it a command file. Item one, item two, item three, item four, and when I hit each of those, each of those, a command file will be called up and executed. The first one is, by the way, add rec. It says add a record. Let's hit one, and we get, if you look at the messages we get here, relate those to the command file we had on our screen a few minutes ago, you'll see these are the messages I told you that would be generated, all right? And it says to add records, uh, you can, uh, 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 hit a key. This is to add records. It tells you how to move around through the fields. And if I hit a key, I will get the append command. Remember that? And here I am ready to add record 127 if I want to. All right. This puts me in a position to add records to the database. Let's hit uh, uh, control W to get out of that. We'll go back to our menu. We so return. We went back to the menu. Item two, if I hit that, I get a set of instructions telling me what to do. If I want to update a record, it says enter the name of the product and the product name, let's just take one, let's say Volks, K-S-W-R-I-T-E-R. -E That's a word processor, Volks Writer. This says if you'd like to uh, uh, update the record, if you know what the price is now, you can call it up, I'll hit return, and I should get a display. There it is, there's a display, and I'm in the edit mode, I can move my cursor around through here and add or delete or change information relative to Volks Writer, all right? I'll hit Control W to get out of that, now it says list all products in a given category. All right, I can do that. Let's just pick one that doesn't have too many in the interest of time. We'll do three to do, uh, to do option three. Let's say C-O-M-M. -M. Let's list all communication products. All right, there's one. I should list them all that have a category equal to C-O-M-M. -M. And there will be a three or four. I don't know just how many, not too many. This would be pretty useful. I think, you'd I think you could understand that. If you'd like to go in and say, well, I don't know, I'm going to buy myself a communication program. Let's look at all the ones that are available. Well, here they are. If this was a much bigger database, it'd be an easy, it would be a tougher problem uh, to do by hand and much easier to do by computer. Now let's do a, uh, hit any key to return to menu. Let's do the fourth option just to complete this. The fourth option says, if you want to search around, seeing if there's any reference made to anything, let's, let's see if there's any references in here to the TRS-80 computer, all right? TRS-80. Let's just put that in as a, as a key word to be searched for and uh, let the system search around and look for it. All right, there's a couple. Each one of them over here in the miscellaneous column has TRS-80. You can see that in your study guide or on the screen here. All the references to TRS-80 are shown here. All right. Now this is a little turnkey system that I've built. It took me a couple hours to program this. This is programming. I've advised you not to program unless you have to. I think learning to do this class of programming, that is to say to write command files, is worth your time because you get so much powerful uh, uh, activity and so many, uh, such power over control of your database uh, by learning to use command files. I advise you to learn programming at least to that extent. Now to wrap things up here, let me make just a few final comments. 
first, we haven't shown you printing any results here. We haven't shown you any hard copy generation. But the uh, capacity for doing that is there. Okay, that is to say, I could have done an appropriate set printer command on here. Everything I generated on the screen, I could have sent to a printer as well. So the capacity for generating printed output is certainly there. Okay, if you don't want to learn to write command files, there are other programs called program generators that let you key in on the screen what you want to see, and the program, that kind of program, will write the command files for you. So that would be a very interesting option for you to consider if you want to do that. A third item I want to mention to you is this. If you're going to be into database management of files of any size, where you're talking about hundreds or thousands of records, you're not going to be happy with floppy disk-based system. You're going to find it takes half an hour or more to do things like indexing and sorting of just one file. You're going to want to go to a hard disk system if you're going to have, a, a, have to have that kind of capacity. Last thing I want to mention is this. There are database generators which are much friendlier than the one we've shown you here. There's kind of a trade-off. The friendly ones, the ones that are easy to use, don't have uh, all this command structure, typically are somewhat limited in what they do. So you have that trade-off. You can either go with a very powerful database generator that can do many, many things in exactly the way you want them done, or you can go to something that's simpler to use that is somewhat more constrained. That kind of a choice is something, of course, you have to make for yourself. That's the end of this presentation. We thank you very much.